hi welcome back to my channel sorry that we're a little bit dark again <laughs> um so basically i was literally just literally on youtube as i do um and i was like i always like to mix up the vibe of my videos because i don't want it to be like really always like i'm sat at my desk like finding it all sort of very serious and i i do feel like i do like to talk about topics i'm interested in um but i don't want it to be like always like just really serious uptight i get up and i you know I don't think I've ever really done that, but I don't know if I like, want to give off that vibe either. So this is a, we've just woken up, got off a YouTube video yesterday, I saw some cool ideas which I thought would be fun to talk about. Um, so, sorry about my makeup being awry, I, I did not take it off last night, but if you can deal with my face then let's go ahead. Sorry I've been eating as well, I'm kind of gross, but I feel like just mix up the vibe, it makes it life more fun definitely wouldn't have got through 20 you know however many years of school until if I had not had mixed up my vibe let's put it that way um so basically it's about body language which I'm actually going to take it really seriously how your speech um affects your mind and how your body language affects your mind and like the structure of your mind and how you think and how like your behaviors are so I was watching this um, TED talk about how um, basically the vibrations of my speech now, which you're getting through your computer, will go to your eardrums um, through your headphones or if we were talking in person it would be like obviously in person um, and basically that would become a thought um, so like my, what I'm saying would affect your thoughts in some way um, and it goes with any sort of interaction like that because as humans we're like a more developed species than like for example an animal and then like we can talk obviously. So this can affect it in a way of either blame and, pu blame and punishment or memory. Um, also like your thoughts which then so if, if you have an interaction something becomes a thought and then that becomes an action of yours so like in terms of a reaction if that makes sense. And this can just have like a huge effect on you, um, especially in terms of like abuse or like just like overall if you have like a supportive friend or if you have like a negative interaction or um, stuff like that. I do think like obviously interactions in general also help build resilience within someone because obviously like not all of your reactions are going to, not all of your interactions are going to be good um, and like there we go but basically language can help like um affect what you focus on um and it was interesting as well to learn how like like different culture uh, different languages also do that um obviously i'm going to talk about like how so how you can change the way you talk and the way you choose to present yourself in terms of body language and how um recognizing how others I think we're very we're very interested in like aware as human beings um obviously in my opinion because we've moved from an old astrological era of Pisces where we're focused on other people to a new astrological era of Aquarius where we're focused on ourselves so we're very conditioned to be um, aware of other people and how they interact with us what they're if they're smiling at us if we are smiling at them if we are looking professional if we look put together you know but we don't really think about how we do that for ourselves um and I would say that one of my schools uh, a couple of my schools I went to and I feel like this is the case in school where you do have to wear like a tie and like a blazer and I do see now why um, they do put that in because even though it seems a bit out of context like why are you getting children to dress up in suits and stuff and I do think as we do evolve I don't know I honestly don't know if that will ever change but obviously in America they don't do that uh, but in England that's that's how they work um, but I, I do think that it actually could add to like I think it can add to, to trying to look put together but I don't know how much it adds to authenticity and stuff because I honestly don't know how good school uniform is anymore in my opinion this is slightly tangenting but I will just say like could that not like make children feel like they have to be like an office person if they don't want to be an office person they're not going to feel very at home or whether they're being their authentic self so it really just helps them swing the other way and they might be you know rude or nasty or you know just just swing the other way in whatever way that means for them withdrawn for some people you know angry for other people like it's just not very good if you ask me um but obviously i don't i'm not in control of the schools and their uniforms so there we go um basically um 
so sorry um and also like i mean i don't want to get like too into like the science and like basically in other cultures you can also pick up on other languages sorry pick up on different things if you have because in certain languages they don't have numbers for example so it's interesting how some cultures they struggle like numerically grouping things and they might be more like general with their words and their mindset then for example some feminine and masculine words are different in different countries therefore they connote them in a different way when they actually have to describe them so that's just that side but basically um psychology often is based on western society often apparently american people um a lot of our studies are done like in america by people um that are not necessarily mixed ethnicity and I mean, like, not it's obviously there's going to be a mix of ethnicities, but I feel like you, culturally they're often American. So I feel like it's just not always taking a lot of um, different cultures and different people into consideration, like Western Western psychology. I definitely, and this is why, and I also did a video in my mental health experience video, um, how I was looking into the Ecuadorian tribes and like how they have like shamans and like spiritual leaders and stuff for people um, that have like spiritual awakenings and stuff like that. Um, which was always really interesting and nothing that was ever spoken to me in in um, western psychology because I did go through the mental health service where it's more based around talking therapy um support work uh what's the word support networks and another thing I find really interesting is like they do talk about being holistic um but they they do talk about mindfulness and meditation and stuff like that um but I've done a lot more development of um energy work which well, i don't really hear you don't really hear the word energy i find in western you do a little bit actually especially in mainstream culture you hear about energy and stuff but we're getting more and more knowledgeable and broad around uh, like that way because if you only base like narrow like the psychology on like the you know um western sense of it you're really like narrowing yourself quite a lot <clears throat> so basically yeah it's you can obviously alter the way you then speak um you can learn a new language which might alter your perception a little bit like i definitely think from learning spanish i've i've like i used to love learning spanish because it just gave me like a whole other i, I think they, they say that people that are bilingual have like lots of pre um I'm not bilingual, but like I did know a bit of Spanish. You can tell that by my trying to speak Spanish video. <laughs> but um, I do think even knowing a small amount of words that you can remember, like, is actually a really cool thing um, because it just helps you learn to uh, think in a different way. <clears throat> or just like breaks the patterns a little bit in your mind and it's quite relaxing um or like just different and fun so there we go so so basically yeah so you can actually change the way you, you speak um and in terms of literally i've learned in the last couple of years um how i was doing negative things that i picked up i think this is quite spoken about um especially talking about childhood trauma and stuff this is very widely un um talked about i feel like um on the internet or people that have gone to any sort of therapy the therapists are trained to um talk about childhood trauma a lot of the time and i feel like if you you can obviously trace the root of a, a mental health issue or um a problem sometimes or a symptom back to a root of cause that's based around childhood trauma um but it can, you can have emotional trauma by people that didn't mean to inflict that trauma upon you but it can be through arguing you know members in your younger years or it can be like you know friends that like you allowed to mistreat you and stuff like that like that can be categorized under emotional trauma and um you can sometimes pick up like things from them um and and internalize that inner dialogue to yourself um so just knowing that you can um understand that and like basically evolve past that way of thinking and break those patterns can help the way you think improve your mental health improve how you live your life and just basically open up your world basically um so I'm going to move quickly on to posture now. So this was something really interesting because I've always, when I was a teenager, not always actually, I think in later school, I was quite, I used to, I was quite into physical health at that point. Uh, 
did it overlap with unhealthy patterns but at the beginning I was interested in mental <laughs> uh, physical health and I learned that posture sitting up straight you should basically put your shoulders back and like put your head like halfway up or something because I used to just I saw it somewhere and I used to kind of practice it a little bit especially if you're sat on a chair and you're hunched over so I do think in my teenage years I was quite good with not having a hunched back whereas now I'm always hunched over not hunched over but there was uh, this video I watched about how if you sit up um, it can basically you can have you can have different um, dominance so it's really interesting to know how if you have like a shriveled up posture you have higher physical internally you have physical higher levels of cortisol and lower levels of testosterone um, and if you sit up and you have like an open posture or you have like an alpha posture or you just literally just sit up you can have lower levels of cortisol higher levels of testosterone and you can feel and appear more confident and you know if you actually force yourself to smile you actually feel happier which is weird um, I actually look like the joker like forcing myself to smile <laughs> I had bright orange brassy hair in lockdown because I was bleaching my hair and I thought I looked like the joker and it was just not a look for me so I had to just like let it go um but it was actually so scary and horrible so I did not like it it wasn't scary but it's just like yeah there we go so um basically um <clears throat> we do like make judgments about other people um from like their posture and obviously what we get from them and their energy and it was interesting to realize why we are in, like for a to be for example um there was studies done on this um to back it up as well how sometimes you're taken as a more um a better applicant if you're if you appear confident and you appear um like optimistic and you have like a good sort of like energy you see more like your um and I'm not I don't think to I'm not trying to say that toxic positivity is good it's not about being happy it's about being confident assertive and less likely to fail and I think that that stems back to a primal level of feeling more secure with that person because if you were about to be attacked by a bear would you choose to be protected by someone that seemed confident more confident more obviously we all have our fluctuations of mental health I'm not trying to say that but I'm saying as a practical level um that some of us may be able to like improve um it's like would you prefer to be with someone that stood up straight seems to be less stressed out cortisol is the stress hormone and also um more powerful and have like more testosterone if you like um so it just goes back to that level you'll feel like you'd be more safe with with the person that seems to be less stressed um and this doesn't just go for other people you, you physically see the changes in the research um this woman was talking about baking it till you make it and bake it till you become it and how tiny tweaks can make big changes um and so yeah apparently um people really find it quite unsettling when someone doesn't move their face and have facial expression which i found really interesting because apparently as a species we need to learn how to interact uh, we like we like get signals from another person and it's quite stressful for someone if they're not getting much from uh, and it's unsettling it spikes someone's blood cortisol if you actually don't show any reaction in your face which is quite interesting to me because I just found that really interesting so there we go um but basically apparently which is also interesting what interacts in your body is if you do have so basically cortisol which is the stress hormone and serotonin which is the um I think it's the happy hormone um, acts antagonistically to this testosterone hormone because the hor testosterone hormone can basically cause aggression um, within the self and apparently serotonin and cortisol which is a stress hormone will act in um, to counteract all the testosterone there so um, that's interesting uh, but basically um, it was also interesting to learn about in terms of power dominant spectrums in terms of not only confidence but in nature and stuff like often if someone has a big posture and they're talking like this um and they're like kind of pride this is like a prideful stance apparently like if like um Usain Bolt comes past and wins a thing he'll go yes he like runs past that's a prideful stance and if someone goes like this that's like a very like I'm scared kind of stance you know what I mean uh, a low dominant stance and a high dominant stance um and it's interesting if someone is like this you will naturally 
do the opposite if you like and even if you don't go look quite like this or a bit more you know just you might put your hands up or you might just it's a natural response to someone that's like this um and the same goes like this you might open your stance up if someone's like this to sort of even even things out and make the other one sort of balance out if you like um and that's also really interesting um so but yeah, it can um, it can really make such a difference. Um, oh, also another thing: women apparently feel as a as a cult, as a gender less um, dominant than males. Like obviously, I'm obviously like taking into account. I'm not trying to say like we can only be male, female. Like obviously, I'm aware of like all the genders. Um, but it's like generally, if you're so, so, um, societally supposed to be more feminine, you feel less dominant than those that appear more masculine. Shall I say? That's interesting to know. Um, so, um, and we know as well, like, if you're, if you're being, like, social or whatever, you'll copy sometimes other people's, um, ways, if you like, and their mannerisms and stuff. Um, I do think it's important to be careful what you copy of certain people, um, because sometimes people, if you co are copying, like, abusers or whatever, you might just not be putting yourself in a great position, um, and sometimes if you haven't been abused before, sometimes you can notice that. Um, but... Yeah, I do think, I do think there's a level of, um, basically being neutral, which I enjoy. And I don't know what I would necessarily call neutral, but I would consider neutral different to how we're supposed to be at school. Because I do feel like in school you're put in a, you're put a tie on, you put a blazer on in the school I went to. And you, like, I even had to wear a kilt in one of my schools. So it's like, I just feel like you're, you've, you've already, before you even left the house, have this mindset that you're supposed to be in or you are forced to be in by wearing those clothes. Because clothes do make a difference. And that's why I love expressing myself through clothing because it helps me um, vent my creativity. Um, I feel like I've actually relied on that a little bit too much in the past, but you've got to think I did spend until I was 16 you know wearing a school uniform so there we go but it's like um yeah you uh sorry <laughs> you you do express yourself through how you are so as I say more neutral I just mean like I think it's just more about being more um comfortable in what you wear more than like trying to put on this I'm a, such a professional facade all the time when even when you're like on lunch and stuff like you're still wearing a tie and like a, and, like, a shirt it just seems a bit it's it is a bit uncomfortable really like I do think that they should look at that if I'm honest but there we go um and it also does I do think school uniform is slightly different but it, I do think it does enforce this like um I don't know if I should say say it because I don't know if I actually believe ever I just feel like it has it is this like we have to please the man kind of mindset because it's like who chose for us to have to wear that uniform it's like the the government and stuff like then it's like we have to just like dance around the government because they force us to wear it. it's like the government controls us kind of mindset which I guess then like prevents hierarchy uh, prevents anarchy but there we go little thought but um another way that we can appear more dominant is to take up space and like broaden ourselves and stuff um and like expand our space um so i do think though that people you can react differently to like school uniform for example i do think this adds to like the variance of people and actually the mental health potential outcomes of wearing school uniform in school because i think some people get really uncomfortable by wearing all the ties and stuff so they don't want to be dominant at all like they're actually children at the end of the day and it might force them to be over anxious to the point where they wouldn't be like that at home wearing their own clothes they might exp and then there might be some people that are over aggressive where they might not be like that wearing their own clothes at home because they feel comfortable to assert themselves through their partially through their clothing so it really just takes away that control um interestingly but yeah, I think that's what I want to say really, but I haven't really spoken about how you can alter your mind in the way you talk, but I have done a lot of videos kind of spreading awareness of how you can think, so I'm just going like, to let that be the, the point, that point. But I thought this was quite an interesting topic. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.